Riot has decided to go all out for patch 14.19 as they are nerfing almost every single item in the game. Their decision behind this move, and this is a quote directly from Riot, states that we want more time for players to play out their champions gameplay fantasy and to put more emphasis on champions than items. So in other words, they don't want so much of a champion's strength being based around whether or not they can abuse an OP item or not. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how all these item changes should affect certain roles and discuss which champions will reap the greatest rewards from them along with an update on the tier list for every single role. And are you sick of losing games from bad teammates? Well, at Skillcapped, we turn your frustrating losses into satisfying wins. Take our brand new Season 14 courses that teach you the secrets to winning as top laner, jungler, mid laner, AD carry, and support. Then pair that with our other new courses on how to counter OP top and mid laners, master your jungle clears, or check out our new Bronze to Diamond series. We even have new Season 14 courses on macro, wave control, trading, settings and hotkeys, CSing, vision, mechanics, low elo mistakes, and the list goes on. Then head over to our Smurf commentaries. Simply select the champion you want to master and get guides from challenger experts teaching how to play your champion in the exact rank you're stuck in. You're even guaranteed to have all your questions answered by that very same challenger expert. Our service really does work. That's why we offer a rank up guarantee. If you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below right now to get the rank you've always dreamed of. There are just two top lane champs who will be directly adjusted for this patch, so let's go into that first, and then after, we'll talk more about how the item changes will influence top lane. Cassante is getting adjusted, and there are many different changes to cover. His auto attack range is getting lowered from 175 to 150. Passive damage is being increased from 5 scaling to 20 to a flat 20 at all levels. Passive will no longer convert damage to true damage when using R. Passive will now give an extra 1% max health physical damage on attacks, abilities, and passive. You'll also get an extra 1% max health damage for every 100 armor and magic resist. As for the Q changes, base damage is going up, AD ratio is being removed, and the resist ratio is being increased. Q hitbox width is being lowered from 150 to 100 units. There are some changes for RQ as well, with it no longer reducing the cast time, cooldown reduction is going up from 25 to 33%, and Q will now slow targets. For the W changes, base damage is going up, AD ratio is being removed, while the max health damage will now scale with 2% per 100 armor and magic resist. W minimum charge time drops from 0.66 to 0.4 seconds. W can no longer be aimed while charging. Stun duration is being adjusted from 1.25 seconds to 0.5, scaling to 1.5 seconds based on charge time. Monster damage cap on W is going up by a significant amount. For RW changes, increased damage reduction is going up from 60 to 75%. RW will now deal an additional 10, scaling to 100% based on charge time true damage. For the E changes, untargeted dash speed is dropping from 900 to 550. Ally target dash speed is being lowered as well. Cooldown of E is dropping by 0.5 seconds at all ranks. As for the RE changes, you will no longer be able to cross terrain with untargeted dash. RE no longer increases untargeted dash range. Untargeted dash speed is down from 1450 to 950. Ally target dash speed is being adjusted as well, and RE will no longer reduce its cooldown by 50%. And then finally, some more R changes consist of initial damage and wall damage type being changed from magic to physical. Duration or R R drops from 20 to 15 seconds. R can no longer be cancelled and it no longer provides bonus AD. Instead, you will now gain more bonus attack speed and also 50% armor penetration while the Omnivamp is a flat 20% instead of 15 scaling to 25%. So with how massive these changes are, we have no idea how Cassante will actually land power-wise until we see him a few days on live servers. As a result, we won't be adjusting his tier list placement for now, but we will adjust next week for the mid-patch tier list if needed. It looks like Riot intends to kill off the W max strategy for Vladimir that has become extremely powerful as of late, and they'll be doing this by reducing W damage to minions from 100 to 60%. We honestly wouldn't be surprised if Vlad's win rate actually goes up for this patch because Q max will come back into meta, and it's had a much higher win rate than W max, even in 14.18. If Q max does make a comeback like we suspect, then Vlad will remain a good A tier pick, but if you're still playing W max, he's probably no better than B tier. Now, let's talk a little bit about how the item changes are going to influence the top lane meta and what some of the bigger changes are. If you guys want a complete rundown of every single item change, then definitely check out our patch 14.19 massive changes video, as that will give you the complete rundown of everything. That video was 26 minutes long, so we're going to try and keep things a little more condensed in this video to save you guys time. The big thing you need to know is that most fighter and tank items are losing anywhere from 5 to 15% gold efficiency. There is a trend with many of the bruiser items, where the damage is dropping on most of them, while a few are actually seeing their health increase. Damage down is the main theme here 
higher though, which will reduce the overall snowball strength and the ability to solo kill on your item spikes. So what will this mean for the top lane meta? Well, the champions who have kits that scale well should be winning out more. Less damage means less kills and longer games on average, so champs that get stronger the longer games last will be liking this patch. Less damage also means that tanks should see a nice indirect rise. If it's more difficult for fighters to take down tanks, then they'll be able to compete for priority in the side lane a bit easier and have a greater chance of being able to match rotations for when a team fight is about to break out. Orn, Shogath, Scion, and Mundo are a few tanks in specific who you should be keeping an eye on for this patch, as they all scale incredibly well and will be enjoying the slower pace of the game. Now, other than tanks, fighters who have either true damage in their kits or who scale very well with time or levels will become indirectly stronger. Nasus should be on the rise, as games lasting longer directly benefits him, as he's able to get more damage from stacking Q. Fiora, with her percent health, true damage from passive, will be a great answer if a tank meta breaks out, and will be strong regardless as her side lane threat becomes increasingly deadly the longer games last. Warwick and Olaf are going to be quite interesting champions to watch due to the changes that Riot are making to Biscuit Delivery. Biscuits are changing so that instead of providing mana, they are now going to give more health back on use and more permanent health as well. Warwick and Olaf being two champions who thrive on lower health could be super deadly with Biscuits because they'll just be able to outlast enemies on low health and potentially be unkillable. Champs that fall off the longer games last and don't have the most impactful team fight are going to be more difficult to win with in 14.19. Irelia, Renekton, and Pantheon are a few melee top laners who we're expecting to drop in strength as a result. So looking at the top lane tier list now, there are a lot of changes for 14.19. Fiora and Orn are being pushed up into the OP tier for the reasons previously mentioned. Irelia, Pantheon, and Renekton are all moving down into B tier. With our expectation of tanks becoming stronger, we've got Mundo and Scion both moving out of B tier. Jogath and Orn are the two tanks we think are going to be a cut above all else though. Champs with true damage like Darius, Garen, Fiora, and Camille should be really liking this patch and they're all placed in S or OP tier. The jungle role has just one champion being directly changed for this patch and it's Elise. The big change is to Elise E interaction with Flash as you will now be able to E Flash which will make catch plays a little more reliable. Our cooldown is going to be reduced as well going from 4 to 3 seconds. So this change to Elise E Flash is definitely going to give experienced Elise players a nice boost in power. For the average player we probably don't see Elise gain too much win rate but we're happy to be wrong about that. For now we're going to be leaving Elise in the jungle A tier but if this quality of life buff turns out bigger than expected we'll update for the mid patch tier list. So a lot of what we mentioned for top lane is also going to coincide with what we're expecting for the jungle. Fighter junglers will be losing damage on their one item spikes for this patch so they'll be losing snowball power as a whole. Now tanks in the jungle are going to be very interesting because Riot's increasing the monster damage ratio on Sunfire Aegis from 100 to 150 percent. Sunfire Aegis doesn't look to be losing very much early game power at all as it's only the bonus health scaling on its passive damage that is being nerfed. Zac, Amumu, and Ramus are a few junglers who like to implement Sunfire into their builds so relative to other fighter junglers those three should be getting better for this patch. Ramus in specific will be one to keep an eye on because Riot's increasing the armor on Thornmail and also reducing the cost of the item from 2700 to 2450 gold. Most fighter items are over 3k gold so the fact Thornmail is now only 2450 will allow for Ramus to hit his one item spike much faster than most other junglers. Now even though most fighter items and some lethality items are losing damage a few AP items are actually gaining damage. Lichbane for example is getting more flat AP however its movement speed is down and haste is also down to compensate. For someone like Evelyn who can go stealth and doesn't rely on movement speed as much to find openings into fights she could actually benefit from this change. Fact is you're going to have more damage with Evelyn on that one item spike so when it comes down to skirmishing other fighter junglers it's going to get a bit easier. Echo, Elise, Nidalee, and Diana are a few other junglers who rush Lichbane and will be bursting a bit harder on that one item spike. Leandries is just getting flat out nerfed for 14.19 with its AP dropping from 90 to 70 so this one should have a good impact on a bunch of the meta junglers. Amumu, Udir, and Lilia should become weaker but then again it really depends on who they're playing into. Eclipse for example is also just flat out nerfed losing 10 AD and getting a cost increase so Lee Sin, Hecarim, Jarvan, Shin Zhao, and Kane will all be getting weaker as well. So overall many fighters and AP junglers are definitely weaker for this patch while tank junglers and certain AP junglers should become marginally better. So for the jungle tier list, here are the adjustments that we'll be making for pre-patch. Zac is getting a push up into the S tier as we think tanks should be getting better and Zac being a tank who also has percent health damage will be loving the longer games. Shivana is moving back into S tier as the longer games will directly benefit her due to the level scaling she has in her E damage and dragon form along with the ability for her to get tankier the more dragons she stacks. Junglers who are more early to mid game reliant should be getting a bit weaker for this patch especially those who like to rush Eclipse since Eclipse is being hit with a pretty hard nerf. Lee Sin, Hecarim, and Shin 
Zhao are a few junglers that we think should be worse off as a whole for 14.19. Rek'Sai doesn't build Eclipse, but she is more reliant on snowballing the early game to be effective, so we think she'll be losing relative strength for this patch as well. As for the likes of Nidalee and Elise, it's tough to say how the patch will impact them because Lich Bane is actually getting more damage for 14.19. You're losing movement speed and haste from the item, but unlike many other items, Lich Bane is not just flat out hard nerfed, so for now, we're not going to be moving these Lich Bane junglers anywhere on the tier list, as it's more difficult to read just how they'll end up as a result of the changes. Kindred is one jungler who does have that innate scaling in her kit due to collecting marks, so she should be liking this patch a bit more with the longer games, so we'll give her a bump into A tier for now. Mid lane is going to be rather interesting for this patch, because unlike jungle and top lane, there are actually a handful of champions who are already quite good that will be very minimally impacted by the item changes. For example, Syndra is one pick we are quite high on for this patch for a few reasons. First off, Ludens and Storm Surge aren't actually losing any damage at all, so the burst threat of Syndra remains intact. Riot's reducing the haste on Ludens and reducing movement speed on Storm Surge, so the items are being nerfed, just not in the way of damage like many other items are being hit. Syndra has the built-in scaling due to her passive as well, so the longer games last, the better it is for Syndra, and she should be liking this patch as a result. Mages who have strong extended fight power should see an uptick in strength as well, so Syndra also falls into that category, but other mages like Anivia, Oriana, Cassiopeia, Swain, and Aurelian Soul are going to benefit from the patch. Burst champions may have a bit more difficult of a time winning out for 14.19, especially AD assassins. Zed, for example, has been rushing Eclipse in recent patches, but the item is losing 10 AD. Who knows, there could be a new meta build that pops up and Zed remains in a good spot, but if Eclipse is still the best option for 14.19, then he's definitely getting weaker. Fizz is another burst assassin who's going to have a more difficult time because the AP on Zanyas is being reduced. Now Yasuo and Yone will be two champs to pay attention to for 14.19 because of lethal tempo coming back. It's all going to come down to how strong the rune actually is when it ships the live servers, so accurately predicting their power levels is very difficult, and we'll be leaving them in the A tier for now. Overall, the trend that we are anticipating for mid lane this patch is that mages with extended fight strength are up, while champs who are more reliant on bursting drop down. So if we take a look at how we've got the mid lane tier list constructed, OP tier will now feature Silas, Aurelian Soul, and Syndra. Silas had already been very strong in 14.18, and for a champion who has incredible extended skirmish strength, we think he's going to like 14.19 even more with less burst damage in the game. Vagar with his built-in scaling is being moved up into the S tier, as longer games will just allow him to stack up more AP and become a more significant threat. Fizz, Zed, and LeBlanc are all getting pushed down the tier list for 14.19, as we do think burst assassins will have a more difficult time finding success. Swain is a mid laner who we think will be one of the most sleeper OP champs in the game for this patch. The fact he scales well, can get super tanky, and his extended fight strength is amazing bodes extremely well for him. Less damage in the game means Swain will be able to frontline even longer and just be such a nuisance in teamfights. We have one ADC who's going to be receiving direct changes for 14.19, and it's Tristana. As a result of dominating pro play, Riot had to gut Tristana for solo queue as her win rate has been sitting around 44%, so now that the world's patch is out being 14.18, Riot can go ahead and try to help Tristana for solo queue in 14.19. There are a bunch of base stat changes being issued, with base AD going up, AD per level is dropping, attack speed ratio is being increased, auto range is going up, health regen is down, and armor per level is dropping as well. Passive bonus range is going to be reduced, Q bonus attack speed will be going up by 10% at all ranks, W base damage is being lowered, however the spell will now have a 75% bonus AD ratio. Slow on W is going down from 60 to 40%, the passive damage on E will be lowered, E base damage will be down, but the bonus AD ratio is going up, E damage amp per stack is down from 30 to 25%, E crit strike modifier is going up from 33 to 100%, and lastly for the R changes, base damage will be lower, however there will now be a 70% bonus AD ratio on the spell. Cooldown will be reduced from 120 scaling to 100 seconds to just a flat 100 seconds. R will now stun targets for 0.4 scaling to 0.7 seconds. So overall, it looks like Riot's trying to shift Tristana away from being a strong early game champ to a better scaling pick. With base damage dropping on W, E, and R, your early game all in power won't be as lethal as before. If Riot's goal from these changes are to kill Tristana in mid lane and transition her back to being a bot lane carry, they've likely taken a good approach here as less early game power will heavily reduce the strength of Trist mid. Now, the big question is, will the scaling buffs outweigh the early game nerfs for Tristana when played down in the bot lane? It's impossible to say until we get to play her on live servers, as there's just so many changes here, so we won't be moving Trist anywhere on the tier list for now, but we'll circle back for mid patch if she's in need of a push up. So let's discuss how we expect for the item and rune changes to influence the bot lane meta. When it comes down to that first legendary 
secondary purchase for ADCs, it's looking like all options are being nerfed at pretty equal amounts. Blade of the Rune King is losing 10 AD, Kraken Slayer is losing 5 AD, 1% move speed and damage off its passive, while Static Shiv is also losing 5 AD, attack speed is down by 5%, and 1% movement speed is being shaved off. The Collector is seeing its cost increase by 200 gold, and Lethality is dropping by 2. Infinity Edge is arguably getting nerfed the hardest, as it's losing 10 AD and its cost is also up by 200 gold. Essence Reaver is losing 5 AD, Haste is going down by 5, and Cost is up by 50 gold. Of all the items being nerfed, it's likely champs that rush the Collector and Infinity Edge who are going to be hurt the most. The Collector being more expensive will feel quite bad because the item provides you with lethality, and lethality as a stat is more valuable the earlier you can grab it in the game, so delaying that Collector buy makes the item less enticing. It's now going to be harder to snowball this patch as well, and games will be lasting longer, so that means the value from lethality will be lower on average. Samira, Caitlyn, and Neela have been the three ADCs running the Collector Rush the most in recent patches, so we see them being on the weaker side this patch. Lethal Tempo coming back for 14.19 could potentially be quite big for a bunch of ADCs as well. If the rune does end up shipping in a very strong state, then the entire meta could just end up being defined based on which ADCs can take advantage of Lethal Tempo the best. So which ADCs are we expecting to come out on top for 14.19? Well, champions who have built-in scaling and who also have good potential with Lethal Tempo, like Kog'Maw, Jinx, Vayne, and Kai'Sa, should be priority picks. Kog has the percent health damage from W, Kai'Sa has percent health damage from passive, Vayne has true damage on W, and Jinx scales super well due to her passive resets. We're less intrigued by ADCs who need to win out in the early to mid game to succeed, like Draven, Lucian, Samira, and Neela, because if games do go beyond 25 minutes and the enemy team is a hyper scaler with an enchanter by their side, it's going to be quite difficult to out impact them. Games going later will just happen more often this patch due to less damage on items, so these hyperscaling ADCs are who we are looking at to rise in strength. So for the ADC tier list, we've got a change to the OP tier for this patch, as moving up will be Kog'Maw, while Jin is dropping down into S. Kog'Maw should in theory be really great for this patch, because with games lasting longer, the percent health damage she has to offer will be of great value, and we've also been seeing a shift more towards enchanters in the support role as of late. Lulu was just buffed in 14.18 and is seeing a lot of play again. Senna is arguably the most OP support in the game right now, while a melee support like Leona has been nerfed pretty hard and is no longer a high priority support. Other than Tristana, none of the ADCs down in the C tier that Riot gutted over the past few patches are getting buffed for 14.19, so even though someone like Smolder could get marginally better for this patch due to the less snowbally nature, his relative power should still remain quite low. If you're looking to take advantage of a scaling ADC, then we think Kai'Sa, Jinx, and Kog'Maw will be three of the most powerful options. Sivir has been a bit of a forgotten ADC as of late, only holding around a 2% play rate, but with Lethal Tempo coming back and Sivir having some pretty strong scaling strength, she could be a more under the radar option as well, and we're going to be moving her into the S tier. So to round out the video, let's have a look at some of the bigger support item changes and how we think the meta will shape out. There isn't a single support who's getting directly buffed or nerfed for this patch, so let's jump right into the item changes. The legendary support items that are rushed most frequently are the most important ones to discuss. Echoes of Helia is losing some AP, and its siphon passive damage and heal are both dropping. Mandate is getting changed with its cost going down by 50 gold, but its passive is hard nerfed as ally bonus movement speed is getting removed. Moonstone will have its AP lowered by 5, health is down by 50, and its passive strength is also being reduced. Locket nerfs consist of the item becoming less tanky as it's losing 5 armor and 5 magic resist. Warmogs will be losing movement speed as its base and passive movement speed are dropping, so overall it's looking like most rushable support items are losing around the same amount of power. For this reason, we think the support meta is not going to change too much from where it was in 14.18, and if anything, the strong picks from 14.18 are only going to become even better. With less damage on ADC items, this should give rise to enchanters as they won't be as easy to kill now. Melee supports are going to be losing some power, since their all in strength won't be as powerful with less damage coming out of their ADCs. So with all that in mind, here's how we have the support tier list aligned for this patch. Senna should just be absolutely god tier now, as the fact she has a built-in scaling from her passive will allow her to thrive even more in the longer games. Poppy is going to be one of the few melee supports that we expect to remain in a good spot. Deadman's Plate is the item that Poppy rushes, and the item is not actually being flat out nerfed like many other items. Armor and health are actually going up on Deadman's, while its movement speed is being lowered, so with less damage on ADC items and Deadman's getting tankier, Poppy is going to be surviving a bit longer in 14.19. Enchanters as a whole are going to be the class of champions who should rise up the most for 14.19. Lulu, Soraka, Janna, Sona, and Melio are five who we have in the S tier, and any of them will be a great pickup for this patch. Alright guys, one last thing, our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. 
That's how confident we are in SkillCap. We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit SkillCap.com and see the difference. So that's going to wrap it all up for our 14.19 pre-patch tier list update. Definitely be sure to check back next week for our mid-patch tier list update as I'm sure we'll have a lot to discuss as the meta materializes over the course of the week. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you back soon.